And this led to Jericho and Hager versus Luther and Serpentico. And as noted earlier, Jericho worked as a total babyface in this match. Jericho tried so hard. So the thing is with this one is like they did a good job on social media, or actually a really good job on social media of telling the story. And they they kind of did on TV, but not as good. Um, I mean, the idea is on, on the idea on TV. They did let you know that like they've wrestled before in Japan years ago, which is where Ghetto's name came up. But I mean, the story, the original story that they were telling on social media was that they essentially started together, and Luther Len Olson was a bigger star, quicker and better for that matter. At the same time, he might have had a year or two on uh, um, on Jericho as far as starting earlier, but he was the big, the bigger star in Japan first, and then his career just kind of, you know, it was really I think it was injuries, um, and you know, obviously Jericho's career took off, and and he, you know, just was a forgotten guy, and he, here he is, and it was kind of like the idea of, you know. Jericho did everything he could to put him over, but, you know, not everyone in their 50s is, is still going to be good. And, I mean, I think that was what the key here was, is like, like, Luther's out there and he was, you know, he was trying, but he was, he was, you know, he was slow and they missed some stuff. And, um, you know, it was, it really wasn't that great. Serpentico was good, but... um you know, and I mean, I remember, you know, I remember Dr. Luther when I saw him in Japan. The guy was the guy was great. Jericho's not overrating him or over pushing him. You know, when they talked about the Hayabusa stuff, I mean, he's the guy who originally made Hayabusa was just some prelim guy. I was there. It was a cork and hall. Hayabusa was just some prelim guy, E.G. Izaki, who, um, you know, you could see had some promise. And then he had a match with Dr. Luther, and they freaking tore the house down. And it was one of those things where it's two young guys, and you watch it, and you just go, both of these guys are going to be big stars. And Luther was kind of a star in FMW, and, and Hayabusa was actually a huge star in FMW. So, um, you know, but uh, I think he had shoulder problems, and I think that that's what was kind of like what kept his career from you know being big in the monday night wars era of wrestling yeah, jericho gave luther everything in this match although interestingly enough he did beat him in the end he didn't beat serpentico they did the spot where sammy jumped up on the apron luther bumped him off luther turns around boom judas effect one two three and then afterwards they did the big celebration which was all of the heels coming out to celebrate. They're chanting Jericho's name. He starts cutting this babyface promo. 30 years in this business. I want to thank all of you. And he gets interrupted by MJF. And MJF comes out. He's got this... Well, he's got basically a clown, as we later discover. It's Clownico Lay Clown. And MJF says, you know, it's not about the clown. The clown has a gift. Jericho goes to open it, open it up, and MGF says, listen, before you open it, I just want you to know you inspire me. Next next week, I will make a career-defining announcement. I want you to be there. Jericho opens it up. It's a framed picture of MJF. Jericho thanks him for the picture, and then he breaks it over the clown's head, gives the clown the elbow, says, I hate clowns. Don't ever interrupt me again. And they have a stare down. Everyone thinks they're about to fight, and then they both start laughing, and Jericho says, ah, let's enjoy the celebration. And they roll the credits. Every credit is Chris Jericho. Camera operator, director, producer, Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho. That's how the show went off the air. I laughed heartily at the credits. There you go, the 30th, 30th anniversary of Chris Jericho in the that's books. A, that's a long time. It is, it is. His career is really an amazing career when you look back on it because... Um, you know, I mean, the key is the the reinvention and the leaving the business and coming back. Um, he did a lot of things right that that gave him longevity. I think if he had never left to do the rock tour, I think that he would have never been. Um, I think because because if you remember in WWF, a lot of those times or WWE, a lot of those times, 
after after a while by 2005 for the most part like he was just a guy you know he wasn't really getting pushed it was he was not getting pushed at all um and then he left when he came back because he was gone for so long people missed him so much when he came back that he could come back as a big star and then after a while um every time he came back he was kind of you know, moved down and everything like that. And then he did the one run where he would not, he refused to appear on television, only went to house shows and he got over like crazy at house shows because people thought it was like this special thing and they weren't expecting it. And, um, I remember like you're getting, you know, Vince was trying to get him on TV and it was like he had this mentality that on this run, I am not going to do any television. I'm only going to do, he was doing all the house shows, but he wouldn't do any TV. And so people didn't know he was even working for the company unless they were like the hardcore fans. And so he would show up and place would go crazy, not expecting him. Um, and then, you know, like he had these different ideas and the list and the thing with Kevin Owens and everything like that. And, you know, I mean, if he had not, um, been talked into, uh, doing the Tokyo Dome show against Kenny Omega with Don Callis. Um, I mean, he'd, he'd be like the old guys in WWE who come back and are good for the nostalgia thing. I mean, he'd have reinvented himself and, and everything, but he'd been in, the, he'd be in the middle. They wouldn't, they would never let him get to the top. Um, you know, even, even with Owens, when they were probably as, as entertaining as anything on the show, it was still very much positioned where, you know, they were like Owens was going to be the guy because who, who was younger, who was going to be going over. And he was the guy whose run it role it was, was to put Owens over. It was never about him. It was put over some guys. You know, you're, you know, you got a name put over some guys because you're over 40. And, um, the New Japan thing, you know, I mean, everything snowballed from that, that Omega match. But, um, and now I think. I think it's pretty safe to say he's the biggest star that he's ever been, which is really, you know, again, for guys 49 years old, who's been a star in the business for, you know, much of those 30 years, certainly over, over, uh, 22, 23 of them, uh, to be at his, at his peak, I'd say now the only other time I would say that, that you would say that you could argue that he was stronger would maybe be that 2008 period when he was working with Shawn Michaels because he was legitimately on top then and, um, you know, kind of like the company's wrestler of the year in WWE, even though, you know, and, and, you know, fighting for the championship and things like that. But, um, but this has been, but okay, it's 2008 to come back in 2019 and 2020 for years like that. It's really, it's, it's a real credit to his ability to, to not fall into a pattern and um, to also be able to read the landscape and understand the landscape and um, got an eye for talent because his role, listen, he's, he's going to be 50 in a couple weeks. And I mean, in the end, his role is going to be again, like it was with Vince, which is to put over young guys. And, but right now, because of the way he's been protected for the most part, I think his putting over these guys is going to be more effective um, than than it was when he put over guys in WWE because he put over so many guys. Um, and you, you can't do that because then it stops meaning something. So I think that he'll be in a position where he'll lose on occasion, but only on occasion because there's no... I think that he, you know, that's, that's the role that he should have uh, is, is making guys, but you can't make everyone. You got to pick and choose two or three guys. Um, the Cassidy thing was good. Um, but you know, again, I mean, I, 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 I presume Jungle Boy will be like the big, the big one that he's remembered for when all is said and done, even though it hasn't happened yet. That's kind of like my, my gut on everything, reading the tea leaves.